1970s soul music has been sampled in hip-hop for decades, from Kanye West's iconic chipmunk soul sound to today's artists like Drake, Kendrick Lamar, and J. Cole, soul samples seem to dominate across all major rap albums. And it's no surprise that these songs get sampled so often. The 70s were called the golden age for a reason. 70s soul music has way more depth, character, feeling, and well, soul than most of today's music. So today we're gonna break down the three secrets that you can steal from 70s soul to really elevate and level up your beats. And then I'll show you how to apply those techniques by making our own 70s soul sample completely from scratch. The first secret to 70s soul music is human feeling. One of the reasons that 70s soul music has way more feeling and character than today's music is because it actually has a human touch. This is because all of the instruments were actually played in a real studio by real musicians. And because everything was played live, as well as the technological limitations that they had back then, there were a lot of imperfections in the music that gave it a ton of character. So before we get into making our own soul sample from scratch, let me show you how you can recreate that imperfect human feeling to give your beats a more soulful sound without having to play any real instruments. To make your MIDI pattern sound more human and authentic to that 70s soul sound, there's a few things you can do. One, you can mess with the velocity and the timing to give it a more human kind of sound. You can also use a sustain pedal. And then finally, you can add a lot more rhythm to your melody, and that's going to give it a much more human, live performed kind of sound. So I'm going to go in and make a boring robotic chord progression and then show you how you can spice it up to sound more human and authentic. So everything is the same velocity, everything is right on the grid there, and it definitely doesn't sound very soulful or realistic. So the first thing that is pretty obvious that you can do is come in here and just drag stuff off time like this to give it a more human kind of sound. And that's like step one, but there's more levels to it to get it to sound even more realistic. One thing you can do if you're super lazy is just come in here to functions, make sure all of the MIDI notes are selected, and then click humanize. This is gonna randomize the timing and the velocity, so you're gonna get a much more human sound. But if you want it to be even more realistic, you wanna add some more rhythm, and you also wanna mess around with using the sustain pedal. And if you don't have a sustain pedal, you can come in here to Logic, and you can automate it inside of your MIDI clip. So you can go right here, click sustain, and then you can automate where it's sustaining and where it's not. And if you're wondering why you would use sustain, when real piano players sit down to play the piano, they have a sustain pedal by their foot. And this lets the chords ring out without actually having to hold those notes down. So I could play this chord just like this, right? And you just hear it super short. But if I put my foot down on my sustain pedal that I have and play that same thing, it keeps ringing out, but it gives it a more soft and realistic kind of sound than just holding it like that. So what you wanna do now is add more rhythm to this progression to make it have a little bit more life. So one thing you could do, especially when you have some sustain going, is you could copy this chord over right here, so you have it playing twice, and then put it up an octave like this. And then we can mess around on our keyboard with this chord right here on this second part. Then pitch that up. And obviously this is a super short example, but hopefully it gives you some ideas on how you could spice up your progressions. Another thing that you can do to get a much more realistic and authentic 70s sound without actually playing these live instruments is to use live instrument one shots. And I've got a great example of this with some crazy trumpet one shots that are from my new Elements of Soul kit. Let's take a listen to our loop before we add any live instrument one shots and then after. So it sounds cool, but it doesn't have anything that's hitting you right in the soul. So I dragged in some super powerful trumpet and trombone one shots that were recorded live by real instruments. And this is what that sounds like.
So as you can tell, it gave it way more feeling and it sounds a lot more authentic to that 70s soul kind of style. Secret number two to 70s soul music is layering and instrumentation. One of the most common misconceptions I see is that making these vintage samples takes some god level music theory. But from what I found, you don't need crazy music theory at all. You can take a super, super simple chord progression and build on top of that by layering different instruments that are following the notes of your chords. And just doing that alone can transform your simple, boring chord progression to a complex composition that sounds like a real sample. Let me give you an example. So to start off our sample, we've got this super basic C minor to G minor chord progression. Now this doesn't sound bad, but it definitely doesn't sound super soulful. So to fix that, we're gonna add in a bunch of layers. Before we get into layering more chords, the first thing that we're gonna do is just spice up our piano progression. So the first step is to randomize all the velocities and the timing so that it looks like this. And then after that, you're gonna wanna go in and add some more rhythm and accent chords to get something like this. And if you're wondering where I'm getting all these top notes right here, they're literally just the chords that we're playing, but played up an octave. So you can take those down an octave and this note down an octave, and you can see that they're matching our chords perfectly. Now that we've got that, I wanna show you how just copying that chord progression onto different sounds can really help give it that 70s soul kind of sound. So we're gonna copy that same chord progression onto an electric piano, and then I added another one of these big accent chord sprinkles. But to make it even crazier, I copied those same chords onto this insane organ preset from the Elements of Soul Analog Lab Bank. And with no extra notes than those simple chords that we started with, this is what it sounds like when we layer in three instruments. So as you can tell, it already sounds a lot more complex than that first original idea that we had. But we can take it a couple of steps further to really get it to sound like a full complex 1970s soul sample. So the next thing I'm gonna add is a bass one shot from Elements of Soul. And if you look at this MIDI pattern, we've got this C and this G and this C and this G, which are all just following the root notes of the chords that we had before. And this is what our bass and chords sound like. Before we get into the melodies, we've got to add some acoustic drums to really get that 70s sample vibe. So I grabbed this break right here. That's already got this great acoustic drum feeling. And then now you can hear how just layering the bass, drums, and chords together can elevate that simple two chord idea into something that sounds a lot cooler. Now, for our final layers to really elevate the 70s sample, we need to add some melody. And adding melody doesn't have to be super complicated. It can really be as simple as just stealing notes from the chords and putting those on different instruments to layer them in and make it sound like this big, crazy thing. So for the first melody, what I did is I dragged in these trumpet one shots from Elements of Soul, and I just stole these main notes that we used in the chord progression on the piano to come up with this. So as you can tell, those are almost exactly following the piano MIDI that we had earlier. And I copied that same melody strategy over to our next sound, the violin. So as you can tell from the MIDI pattern, that melody is super simple, but you might be wondering how it relates to the chord progression. So let's copy these notes right here, and then let's paste them in to our chord MIDI. As you can see right here, every single note that we're playing on this violin, which are these highlighted notes, are inside of those chords. So we're playing the root note of the first chord, the middle note, 
of the first chord and then we go down and play the top note of the second chord in the middle note of the second chord and then it just repeats over and over again so if you wanted to create this melody without having to know which notes to choose you could just grab a couple random notes from your chord progression copy it to a new midi file and then from there just adjust the rhythm and then you can create a melody for a different instrument and when it's all layered together it gives it that nice full complex sound so at this point i felt like our melody needed a couple more accent sounds so i grabbed some guitar one shots and some bell one shots this is what they sound like So from that super basic two chord progression, we've built out this whole entire sample. But the thing that really takes those 1970s samples to the next level are those super gritty soulful vocals. So I went into the Elements of Soul kit and found a couple vocal chops and put together with the rest of our melody, we get this. So as you can tell, just layering different instruments can make it sound a lot more full and make it sound like there's a lot more going on than there really is. Before I go over the last secret to achieving that authentic 70s sound, I wanted to give you honestly the biggest cheat code I've seen to making authentic sounding soul samples. For the past six months, I've spent countless hours and thousands of dollars working with Grammy nominated musicians and vocalists to create this huge kit called Elements of Soul. And this kit has over 1700 live instrument phrases, one shots, loops, loops, midis, presets, vocal chops, and so much more. I've been using Elements of Soul for everything that I've been making. Every single sound in the loop we've been making so far in this video is from Elements of Soul. So if you like how it's sounding so far, you definitely need to check this kit out. And for the next two weeks, you can get it at a crazy discount. So I highly recommend that you just click the link in the description and check that out. I really try not to overhype my stuff and make it sound like it's crazy when it's not, but I'm telling you, this kit is the real deal. But that being said, it's time to go over secret number three to getting that 70s soul sound, texture. Today's music has a super clean and polished sound, but soul music had those imperfections that I was talking about earlier. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of the imperfections were due to the hardware that they used to record music back then, which nowadays is super hard to come by and super expensive. But there are some things that you can do inside your laptop to help give you that warm analog vintage kind of texture without having any fancy authentic hardware. The first thing that you should be doing to get that vintage gritty texture is adding tape saturation or distortion. Back in the 70s when they were recording music to tape if someone played an instrument too hard or a singer sang too loud it would cause the audio to break up or clip and it gave it that iconic gritty crunchy 70s soul sound so let me show you how to emulate that kind of crunchy sound on this sample i've added a ton of tape saturation to the vocal and the piano i'm going to show you the before and after and then i'm going to break down which plugins i've used hey, hey, hey. So as you can tell, that has a lot more gritty character to it, which is exactly the kind of texture that we want for this 1970s soul kind of sound. To achieve that sound, I used a compressor and I turned the gain up super high to make the audio kind of crunch and distort. And then I've also gone in on RC20 and I've used this crunch distortion and turned it up pretty high to really distort the audio to give it that gritty texture. And then I did the same exact thing on the vocal. I added a super harsh compressor and then I added some harsh tape saturation with the distortion knob right here inside of RC20. Another thing you should do to give your mixes that soulful 70s sound is use plate reverb and slap delay. One thing that you wanna do when adding plate reverb is you wanna add it to almost all of your instruments. The reason for this is back in the day when they were recording in a studio, they would have all of the instruments running through the same reverb. And doing this gave those 70s songs a super cohesive and well put together sound. So a great way to tie together a bunch of sounds from different VSTs that have different sonics is to add the same reverb on all of them. So I've added this plate reverb called little plate from sound toys and as you can see we don't have a very long decay time we've got it at around one and a half seconds and then we've got the mix dialed down pretty low and i've applied this plug into almost all of the sounds in our melody it's a more subtle difference but it definitely helps add to that 70s realism and as far as the delay goes the slap delay sounds super good on vocals guitars and even drums so here's our guitars with no delay <laughs> 
They still sound pretty good because they're live instrument one shots from the Elements of Soul kit. But to give it that nice texture that we want, I went into Echo Boy and I added this classic tape slap delay preset. And I want you to listen to the delay here. It's a super short delay that almost just sounds like you have two audio files that are slightly off of time. But if you go back and listen to a lot of those 70 songs, they use this delay all the time. <laughs> So again, another subtle change, but it just really adds to that authenticity. Another mixing trick that they used heavily in the 70s was panning instruments hard left and hard right. So as you can see right here, I've got these trumpet one shots panned to the left. And then I've also got these live violins right here that are kind of taking up the same frequency. So I panned these to the right. And then when you play them together, you can hear that one's in the left, one's in the right, and it gives it a much bigger stereo kind of sound. I've done the same technique with a couple other sounds like the Rhodes and the organ. I have one panning right, one panning left. And then for the guitars, I have one of the guitar accents panned to the left and one to the right. Another way to replicate that vintage 70s texture by just using one plugin is by using RC20. So I made a bunch of RC20 presets to capture that authentic vintage sound for the Elements of Soul kit and check out how these can transform sounds. Now that we have our sample fully mixed, I'm gonna bounce it down into one file and pitch and speed it up so you can see what it would sound like if you were to actually flip this sample. enjoyed this video i highly recommend you check out the elements of soul kit i promise you it's going to instantly give you that vintage soulful sound that you want and if that doesn't interest you but you want to learn more about how soul music is made click this video right here